Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to connect the Next.js application to MongoDB Atlas. Next.js is a React-based framework used to build modern applications. Next.js is extremely versatile and has the ability to connect the various frameworks such as GraphQL, authentication library, CSS frameworks, and much more. I personally use Next.js to build different applications and today I'm going to show you how to connect it to the MongoDB Atlas. So the first thing we need to do is launch our text editor. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, but you're more than welcome to use any text editor of your choice. Um, from there, I personally like to create a directory that holds all of my application within the one directory. So for this demonstration, I'm going to name that directory movies. And once you have the movies directory created, we're going to CD into that movies folder. And from here, we're going to type in the command npx create next app space dash dash example space with dash mongo db and right here i'm going to name this project i'm going to name it movies and then we'll press enter now it does take a few moments in order for this to finish installation so i'm going to pause the video here and be right back once it's done okay so now that we finished the installation of our next.js application we can go over to our directory and we can see that it has installed the necessary files in order to run that Next.js app. So in order to run the app, what I'll do next is I'm gonna CD into the movies directory and I have two directories created. So now that I'm in the appropriate movies directory, the next thing we wanna do is type in the command npm run dev and press enter. And it is stating that the Next.js application has started and it is running on my local host 3000. So I'm just gonna copy this link and launch my browser and let's see what we get. So as you can see, once we launch our local host 3000, we're getting an error back that the MongoDB URI is missing. So in order to get the MongoDB URI, we need to go to mongodb.com and log into our account. If you do not have an account, um, it is free to sign up and it is very simple instructions on how to sign up for an account. I already have a MongoDB account, so I'm going to log into that account and show you how to retrieve that MongoDB URI so that we can integrate it into our Next.js application. Okay, so once you have established your Mongo, once you have set up your MongoDB account or logged in, you should see a screen that looks very similar to the one that I have in front of you. What you wanna do next is you wanna click on new project. This is gonna allow you to create a new project or a new MongoDB cluster so that you can connect to the database using the Next.js application. For this particular project, I'm going to name my project Movies. Click next. And from here, it's gonna ask if you want to invite additional members and provide additional permissions. I'm going to um, decline because I'm only gonna have the one email account with access to this particular project. So we'll click create project and it'll take a few seconds. And once it's complete, it's gonna take you back to this database dashboard. So for this demonstration, what we're gonna do is we're gonna query the database for existing data that's already preloaded from MongoDB. This is great for those that want to get practice on how to query the database and retrieve information from a database and display it to a user. So I'm going to click on build database and from here we want to build a free database um, because MongoDB does provide that this is just a simple demonstration but you have other options available to meet you or your clients need. Once you selected the appropriate um, database, you'll click create. And it's gonna ask you what username and password. Um, I typically like to change the password. Of course, I'm not gonna show it here on screen, but make sure that you copy this password and make sure it's unique and that no one has access to it because with this password, it will allow you to connect to your database and you don't, wanna, you don't want anyone to have access to it that's not authorized by you. 
once you have um, entered in your password and you created your user, the next information it's going to ask you for is how would you like to connect? We're going to connect through our local environment. And then last but not least, you're going to want to list a IP address. This is just going to say who has the ability to connect to your database. Um, I'm going to, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use my current IP address and I'm not going to show that in the video, of course, but you want to just click on this button. And then from here, it's going to allow your IP address to be, it's going to allow your IP address to have access to your database as another layer of security. From there, you'll scroll all the way down and click on finish and you'll see a congratulatory message stating that your database has been set up. And the next thing that we want to do is load data into our database. Um, so from here, we'll click on browse collection and we want to load a sample data set. You can always load your own, but for this demonstration, we're going to use what's pre-built by MongoDB. And from here, we'll just click on load sample data. It's going to take a few minutes in order for that data set to load. Once the sample data has loaded into our database, we're going to notice quite a bit of sample data provided by MongoDB. For this demonstration, we're going to be querying the database for the sample underscore MFLIX data. We're going to be working specifically with the movies database, but we'll dive into that a little further in the video. But for right now, the main thing that we want to capture from the MongoDB complex is our URI in order to connect our Next.js application. So what we want to do next is we want to scroll over to the left hand side and click on database. And once the database screen comes up, we want to click on connect. And from here, what we want to click on is MongoDB for VS Code. And we want to grab this URI listed right here. And what we'll do is we'll navigate back to our Next.js application. And right here where it says .env.local.example, we're gonna see the MongoDB underscore URI. Here is where we wanna paste in the URI that we picked up from MongoDB. The other thing that we wanna include or make sure that we include is where it says password. We wanna make sure that we're typing in the password that we've updated. And once we've typed in that password, the next thing that we want to do is rename this .local.env example file. And the way that we'll rename this file is by right clicking on it and going to rename. And we can actually get rid of everything except for the .env and press enter. Now, if we go back to our next JS application and press save, or if we terminate the batch and restart our server, and once it is restarted, we go back to our localhost 3000 and we refresh the screen. We should see that we're now connected to, we now have our Next.js application connected and it states that we are connected to MongoDB. So the next thing we wanna do is display that movies data that's in our database onto in our Next.js application. So I'm gonna show you how to do so next. So before we move forward with the next steps in displaying data from our database to our Next.js application, I wanna take a few seconds just to show you what has already been installed for us to make this MongoDB connection so seamless. What we have is a LIB file and within that LIB file, that lib file, we have our MongoDB connection information. Um, if you recall, this was the data that had to be typed in previously. But now with the enhancements with Next.js, all you need to do is include that you want to connect to a MongoDB database, and it's going to provide this information for you right out of the box. And the only thing that you need to include is the MongoDB URI to connect it to your Atlas so that it knows which Atlas to connect to and knows that you have the appropriate permissions in order to access that data. So the next thing that we want to do now that we have this set up is create a API folder that's going to allow us to query the database or is that's going to allow us to make that connection to the database so that we can begin to grab that data and work with it within our Next.js application. So first, let's go ahead and create an API directory within our pages folder. So right here where it says pages, we're going to create a directory named API. And then we're also going to create a, a file within that directory named movies.js. 
And within the movies.js file, um, we want to include some boilerplate information. So here we have the code that's going to allow us to connect to our MongoDB database uh, within the API folder. This is very similar to what you would see if you were to query the database within an express file or an express application. We're basically bringing in the MongoDB connection. This is going to be an asynchronous function and of course we want to make a request and we're expecting a response back. We always want to input our code in some form of a try catch block so that we can capture any errors. So what we have here is we have a variable that's going to be making that client promise for us. We want to connect to the sample underscore inflex database. This is the database that I showed you in the previous segment that is within our MongoDB database. From here, we just created a variable named movies that's going to await the connection to the database to confirm we have access. Once it confirms we have access, we want to look into the collections called movies. We want to find all of the data. We want to sort it in uh, these in ascending order. We want to hold it to a limit of 10 and we want to return it in an array. And that array is going to be a response.json so that it allows us to work with that JSON data. And from there, if we get any errors, we want to log it to the console. And once we have this um, established, we actually can start and stop our server. And once we restart our server, if we go back to our localhost 3000 and we include the endpoint API dash movies, we'll actually see that we're returning this data back from the database now. So this is great. So this means that we that our Next.js application is connected to MongoDB. We're able to go to our local host um, slash API slash movies and see the actual data that's within our database here. So the next thing that we want to do is display this information onto our web page so that our users can see something a little more cleaned up and that's a lot more user friendly. Now to access this data within our Next.js application, we're going to create a movies.js file directly within the pages directly. This is going to represent an actual page within our Next.js application. And once we enter in our code, all we'll need to do is go to localhost slash movies and it's going to display that data based on the code that we've typed in. So I'm going to create that directory now and show you how it works. So now we have the movies.js file created directly in the pages directory. I'm going to copy and paste some code directly from the MongoDB documentation that's going to allow us to query the database and display that data. We're going to be displaying the top 20 movies of all time listed here within our page. Right here, we have a simple loop that's going to map over the data within our database, and it's going to display the title, the matriarch, and the plot of the movie. And the cool thing about Next.js is we're actually able to query our database directly within the file itself. Um, and this is gonna allow us to have a lot more control over what's being displayed in, this, in the screen. But in this demonstration, we're just gonna keep the same code that's within the MongoDB documentation just to show how simple it is to display onto the screen. So once we've copied this information, we'll press save. And if we go back to the localhost 3000 and go to the movies endpoint, we see that we have the top 20 movies all time listed here for our users. And this is the same information that's coming from our database that's being listed here within our Next.js application at the localhost 3000 movies endpoint. I hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Like I mentioned, all of the steps are directly from the MongoDB documentation and I'll be sure to leave all the links below. If you found this video useful, feel free to leave me a like. If there are any suggestions, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, to follow my journey, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching it and I'll see you in the next video.